why should I trust you? Why should you trust me? It's kind of an interesting question, isn't it? In fact, the very foundation of most relationships, whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, really is the whole idea of trust. And it's this whole thing on trust that either makes things move forward in terms of progress or whether it's a transaction or whether that relationship is going to remain in a healthy state. All of this, a lot of it has to do with trust. Why should I trust you? So let me use the whole example of sales. Let's say that you are on one side of the table. Let's say that you're the customer or the prospective customer. You're asking yourself, the person who's talking to you on the other side of the table, like me, for example, you're asking, gosh, you know, can I trust this guy or lady who's trying to educate me or sell me on a product or a service? Or if on the other side, let's say you're the salesperson and you're going, gosh, I wonder if this person is really going to follow through in their commitment. Are they really seriously looking to purchase this or are they just kind of kicking the tires? There's a couple of books that I've been reading on this very topic, understanding that trust, once again, is the foundation of relationships. And I think we've all had those experiences where you could definitely sense that there was a lack of trust and therefore things didn't work out or things got really weird or dysfunctional and so forth and so on. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight a couple of books on this whole idea on trust. The first book I want to talk about is a book written by a management consultant, Patrick Lencioni. I'm a big fan of his in terms of how he sees things and I've had the privilege of actually hearing this person talk, this this uh, this man, this management consultant speak, and he's very fascinating and very fun to, to watch talk and listen to. And so, one of the books that he's written is called "The Five Dysfunctions of a Team." And if you could picture a pyramid, and the pyramid has a foundation, well, at the very foundation of that pyramid is, and if you could imagine the pyramid cut up into five sections starting at the bottom and at the very bottom of that pyramid the foundation of it is the absence of trust and so or lack of trust and so foundational if you would to the dysfunctions of a team if there's an absence of trust several other things begin to manifest themselves within that organization such as fear of conflict or lack of accountability or lack of commitment. All these things, just all these indicators are simply that, just that. They're indicators of a lack of trust. And uh, Patrick Lanciani continues to articulate and spell out in his book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, on how you can assess in terms of a, a level of health or healthy trust in your organization. And whether it's a, a church uh, leadership, governing board, like a, like, like a, uh, a leadership team, or it could be a company, or it could be a family. It, it doesn't really matter. Or it could be, just simply be a relationship between two people. The whole idea here is how do you know whether or not the trust factor between in that relationship is healthy or does it need improvement? There's another book that I've, uh, I'm enjoying reading. It's called The Speed of Trust by Stephen Covey. He's also known as, the, well, he's the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so he talks about how if there is low trust, the cost of doing business or the taxes, if you would, in that relationship go way up and progress gets slowed down. And he talks about different examples on how that is so. And one of the things I want to talk about today is the idea of if trust is so important in a relationship, whether it's personal, or whether it's a business or some combination thereof, how then do you engender trust and how do you get trust quickly in a relationship? Well, one of the things that Stephen Covey brings out in his book is the whole idea of making and keeping commitments to oneself. Isn't it interesting that we have a tendency to keep commitments to uh, the, or rather we keep commitments to other people we're more likely to hold those or, or keep those commitments 
than we are to commitments that we make to ourselves. And so, uh, you know, because we're, we're afraid that we might lose um, credibility in that person's eyes or favor or whatever the case is. And so we're more likely to keep an appointment with someone than an appointment for ourselves. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're going to meet a friend or a client over coffee and you say that you're going to be there at 2 o'clock. Well, you'll do almost anything to make sure that you're on time and you meet your friend there or your client. But let's say that you've made a commitment to yourself to go to the gym. Interesting, right? So sometimes we waffle, me for example, or we renege on that commitment and I think you know where this is going. So what does this have to do with engendering trust in a relationship? Well, it has to do with credibility. Because if, for example, let's say that you are a physical fitness coach and you believe that being fit is important, exercise and eating well and all that is important, but if you or I look don't look the part as a fitness coach, why in the world should anyone believe us? Why should anyone trust us? And so, again, to reiterate this another way, is that when we keep commitments and make commitments to ourselves and we follow through, it simply bolsters, number one, self-confidence. And furthermore, it also puts more weight behind our words. And there's a somethingness, if that's such a word, that pe people pick up on whether or not, whether what I'm saying or demonstrating is trustworthy or not. And so I would challenge you, as I would myself, that if I make a commitment to myself, that I keep that commitment just as if I were making a commitment to someone else. Again, the whole idea of trust is a fascinating topic, and it's absolutely vital to relationships if that relationship is going to move forward, stay healthy, a transaction is actually going to transpire, and not only just a transaction, but rather that that relationship, whether let's say it's a sales relationship or a business relationship, that that relationship is long standing. Hope this helps, and in subsequent conversations or video blogs, my hope is that I will talk further about the whole importance of and how to engender trust in relationships. Talk to you later.